So I'm starting a new series here on Fridays called Under the Radar. It's topics, it's content ideas, it's everything to do with college football that actually has nothing to do with college football. And it's never going to be about the high-profile team. So if you're thinking Alabama's showing up, you think that Ohio State's showing up, you think Clemson's showing up, out the door, not happening. And the one thing on everyone's mind right now is the EA college football game. We have waited so long for this to come back, and it looks amazing. The graphics are fantastic. And the only thing that we're really trying to decide right now is who do we start our dynasty with and run through college football? And I figured if you don't have your dynasty picked out, let me give you some good teams that maybe you want to go ahead and hit your wagon to in 2024. But real fast, if you're new to the channel, what's up? I'm Cole Thompson. I talk college football daily. So if this is the type of content you enjoy, make sure that you hit subscribe down below. Leave a comment with your thoughts. Who are you starting your dynasty with? Should I start a dynasty league that I can put here on YouTube? That way we can play together. We can have absolute chaos and craziness. And make sure that you tell your friends, family, mortal enemies, best of bros, video game fanatics, college football fan fanatics. They're kind of going one and the same together because we're on the race to build the number one college football community but also we want to be the number one youtube show make sure also that you're following me on all the social platforms at mr cole thompson tiktok facebook instagram twitter it's literally the exact same as my youtube handle so hit follow over there when you hit subscribe here and if you want to be a part of the monday mailbag you want to have a question as a one-off video really any content ideas that i got go ahead and visit me at cole thompson writing at gmail.com or slide in the dms we are so close to getting this video game back. Like, honestly, you know the song by Green Day, Wake Me Up When September Ends? Wake me up until midnight, when midnight rolls around and this game comes back on my television screens. Like, I asked my wife for our one-year anniversary, don't, don't get me anything. We don't need to do anything special. Just let me have a weekend to where you go away, have fun with your girlfriends, and I can lock the door and not be needed to do a damn thing because I want to start my dynasty. I want to be the best coach in this sport. I want to reign supreme over Alabama, which is funny because that's my university. I want to kill Ohio State. I want to beat up on everybody. And there's some really good teams to do so with. But let's talk about what version you're looking for. Let's say you want to go ahead and start off fresh with a team on the come up but hasn't had a lot of success. I say go with Kansas. You want to know why? They got the quarterback in Jalen Daniels. They got the running back in Devin Neal. There's already a foundation in place for Lance Leipold, who, again, one of the more underappreciated coaches on the come up. He has been a program-defining builder every single stop along the way, and they play in the Big 12. You guys realize that as soon as Memorial Stadium is rebuilt, this is going to be another cathedral in college football. And it's going to be, in my opinion, like there's multiple religions, there's multiple conferences. This one to me is the one that I would subscribe to. This is the one that I would claim as my own. As, I, as somebody that is practicing, I would practice Big 12 football and I would love it. And I know it would be a great one. I want Kansas to be good. You had that run with Mark Mangino in 2007, 2008, and then they fell off a cliff. It literally was like the, uh, it was literally like, like, like the, uh, the, the, the price is right. Yodeling man. Yodi, 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 yodi. And then just fell off. Yeah. You don't want that. What you want is to have dominance with the Jayhawks. They're a cool mascot. They're a fun team. They got great jerseys. They're in a good conference. This is one where you say, hell yeah, every time the Jayhawks take the stands. But let's say you want to stay in the SEC, go a more traditional approach. You know where I'm going with this one. It's Vanderbilt. They're in a fun city in Nashville. They got decent logos. It's not a bad uniform. It's not a bad combination. First Bank's getting rebuilt overnight. You're going to be able to go out to the bars, probably convince a lot of kids that want to be a part of the Nashville culture. It's got a Southern feel with a more modern approach. You also get to play against all the teams in the SEC. And so we know in a new era of college football with a 12-team playoff, you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And it's going to be very hard to beat up on Alabama, Georgia, Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. Uh, you got Eli Drinkwitz now at, at Missouri. Uh, you're probably going to have a big time year from somebody who replaces Billy Napier in the game in 2025. Yeah, you might as well just go ahead and chalk that one up. But if you could bring Vanderbilt back, like you do realize that you immediately become one of the most sought after coaches. James Franklin brought this team to its closest chance of actually being a top 15 roster. And then he got the job at Penn State. You do realize that that's a big deal. When you have these type of moments in the game, 
you're going to be a high profile name and you want to build that dynasty. NIL is going to be big. Imagine what you could do if you get like a major company, like a 247 sports or an on three, because you know, they're going to be in the video game. You get one of them to use an NIL deal with some players. They're going to hitch their wagon. They're going to be a part of it. Vanderbilt's going to be a really fun team. I'm going to reveal my team in a minute on who I'm actually going with. So you're not allowed to take this team because I'm hundred percent running with them. They're brand new. And I want to go ahead and kick ass. It's Kennesaw State Owls. Kennesaw State in Georgia, they've been waiting for their moment to get to the high-end level. They've been waiting to get to FBS. They're here. They're just like Sam Houston State. They're just like UTEP. They're just like every other team that has been trying to earn their right. And unlike Jacksonville State and unlike James Madison, I think this is going to be a long season. Number one, they have a cool mascot. It's a good logo, but they're the Owls. If you didn't know that, I love the color scheme. Color schemes are really big to me. Uniforms that just pop whenever you put them on the field, that's a big deal. It's in the state of Georgia. And if I could go ahead and start building my boosters to start believing that we could be something of promise, we could be something that actually becomes a household name at the group of five level, we're constantly finding ourselves in the conference championship, we're constantly finding ourselves making it as a 12 seed, they're going to start investing in NIL. They're going to start investing, and it's Georgia. It's Kennesaw. It's right outside of a downtown Atlanta. There's talent throughout Kennesaw, throughout Alpharetta, throughout Marietta, throughout the entire global area. How can you not want to go ahead and put yourself in the southeastern region with a great program that could be on the come up? That's my team. I'm telling you right now. Anybody that comes and joins the Dynasty League with me, you're going to have to play me with the Kennesaw State Owls. I love the fact that they're brand new. I think it's a really good concept to be able to bring them into the video game. Let me go ahead and reign supreme. I'll be hooting and hollering my way to a national championship. How about a team in the Big Ten that you really do believe could be actually something? Rutgers. They're not like Vanderbilt because if you started to see a little bit of a turnaround once Greg Schiano came back in, they actually feel like a team that right now maybe is going to be a sleeper a bit in the Big Ten. Like, I'm not saying that they're going to the playoff, but I am saying eight wins is plausible. Maybe you get nine wins. And you know what? They have just been such a dumpster fire, the armpit of the Big Ten of any other conference, because they've been so lackluster. But they get talent in the NFL every year. Max Melton this past season was, what, a top 50 pick in the draft? Bo Melton went off with the Green Bay Packers. Like, they get talent to go there. It's all just about now finding that sustainability. New Jersey, you got New York money right up the road. You got a lot of people in Piscataway that probably commute into the city. You got a lot of boosters. It's not a great school. It's not a great stadium, but you see a few upsets here and there. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights, mama, if you're watching this video, please know I talked about your university today. Yeah, you could easily go ahead and start something there. They're one of the better teams, in my opinion, when it comes to the dynasty mode. At the power four level. Naturally, we all want to play with the young up and comers, but if you were to go with the team at the dynasty level, why are you not considering Rutgers? Another team, SMU to me, this is actually one that feels like a dynasty mode that's going to come to life. Like you do realize that NIL runs rampant down in Dallas. And now they have the power four logo, and now they're in the ACC, and now they have some talent. They got a coach in Rhett Lashley that people believe in. So you know the boosters are going to be there. And if the game has any bit where NIL collectives kind of just go quietly all over the place, SMU, as we all know, has no problem spending money. They have no problem dishing out checks. And they're going to come in McDonald's bags. They're going to come in Wendy's bags. They're going to come in Zaxby's bags. They're going to come in everything. And they're also going to be legal. And so when you think about the ACC, a major component, a major prominent college football conference, and the fact that it's Dallas- it's Dallas. Guys, if you don't know what Dallas is, I'm telling you, they have money that flows throughout the entire avenue. It could be filled with the streets and you could literally just be sweeping it up and still be able to see people come away with a profit. That's how much money is loaded throughout Dallas. I'm just telling you, don't be shocked if actually you start seeing SMU be a competitor in 2025 for an ACC title. You can build them into a dynasty, kind of like what we saw in the 1980s. Coastal Carolina to me is just a fun team. Like, they are everything that I want at a group of five level roster with hell yeah mantra in the southern region of the United States. They got a teal level field. They got a dope mascot. I mean, it's a chicken with muscles. Like, they do. Like, that's just fun. Yeah, one of the biggest clips of all time with the coach. Like that, dude. I mean, how do you not love Coastal Carolina? 
They were fun. They were innovative. They had a great offensive mind when Jamie Chadwell was there. They were one of the highlight teams of 2020 during COVID. We all watched them play BYU. You're lying to yourself if you did not tell me you saw Grayson McCall and Zach Wilson go toe-to-toe with each other. You're lying because that was the best game. They play in the Sun Belt Fun Belt. They're going to be playing against quality competition. They're actually a team that many people will root for because of the logo, because of the branding, because of the conference. This is one that you want to hitch your wagon to. The Chanticleers are shouting from the rooftops, pick us in dynasty mode. We're a good team and we have a good baseline. I don't know what you feel about their boosters. A team that I really just would want to pick because if I feel so bad for them, it's one for the pack too. You got to remember, they literally got told, yeah, screw you. You're not going with us. I'd pick Oregon State. Oregon State has been a dumpster fire. They really were. And then you bring in Mike Riley, and he changes the culture, and then he finally gets his big shot with Nebraska. That did not go according to plan. And then Gary Anderson comes in, and what does he do? He literally destroys the program. There's no other way to put it. He destroys the program. He takes everything that Mike Riley did, everything that Dennis Erickson did, everything that Jonathan Smith tried to emulate as a quarterback and just said, screw you, and shove it up your Easter. That's it. That's what happened. So Jonathan Smith comes in. He finally leaves his alma mater because of there's not a future there. Well, why don't we bring a future to Corvallis? Research Stadium is awesome. It's a great atmosphere. The Beavers are an exceptional fan base. They belong somewhere. And I'm not saying at the group of five level. Like somebody commented on my top 10 video saying, where's Oregon State? I have too much respect to call them a group of five school. They're really well put together. They're a balanced, cohesive unit. And the fans deserve more than group of five personality. So give them what they deserve. A spot in the playoffs, a shot of winning a national championship every single year, boosters that actually are going to fight for them to get in the major conference, and eventually they'll just shove it up the same way that you saw Gary Anderson do it, but this time with a national championship. If I were to go to the Big 12 again, because again, this is the best conference of college football, I'm going to die on this hill. I don't really care. I'd go to West Virginia. Just, Just do me a favor. Listen to the music. Listen to the Black Hills. Listen to what comes rolling into Morgantown, what that atmosphere is like, what a game day is, how you feel the Mountaineers rumble as they enter the stadium. How do you not get excited about this team? How do you not get excited about Neil Brown? Last year, underdog mentality, didn't give a flying fadoodle that they were picked to finish dead last in the Big 12. When you brought in three new teams and they went nine and four, And now you look at this roster going into this year. If you were to start the team, you get Garrett Green, you get CJ Donaldson, you get a good defensive front. This is one that is a very fast rebuild, and it's for a program that honestly might actually eventually compete for being the flagship in the Big 12. It's such a wide-open conference right now. Kansas State deserves some love. Utah, even though they're newcomers, they're really well put together with Kyle Whittingham. Oklahoma State still has Mike Gundy, and they have a great atmosphere on game days in Stillwater. It's one of those things where you can't count out in West Virginia. They belong in the conversation alongside everybody else. This is a team that you know the atmosphere is going to be emphatic in the video game, and you get to play in the Big 12. I'm going to continue to say that. The Big 12 is second to none when it comes to conferences. And then you get Appalachian State. Let's stay with the Mountaineers and move a little bit down to North Carolina and Boone. Number one, you're playing in the best stadium in college football. I'm sorry. If you tell me on a warm October evening you get to go play with the leaves are changing in Boone, North Carolina, and come running out of the tunnel with Appalachian State, that's a great atmosphere. That's just great in college football. Like, honestly, it's on my bucket list of games that I really want to go to. Appalachian State fans, if you're here, if you start liking these videos and start telling me, we want you to come visit us, I will make the trip. I'll pay out of my own pocket, and I will fly to North Carolina because North Carolina is one of my favorite states. But you have a team that proved itself back when they beat Michigan, back in the Rich Rodriguez era. And now it all culminates with you, where you fell in love with football, the way that I fell in love with football back when that happened. You get to take that team deeper and deeper and deeper, and they go on runs, and they go on tirades, and you get to use the transfer portal in your favor. And lo and behold, there it is, an opportunity for you to make it to the national championship. Who would not want to see the state of North Carolina bring home a title and it not come to one of the schools that is better known for basketball? Speaking of basketball, this is a school, but I'm throwing this one on there because of honestly, my dad deserves some love. My dad is the reason why I'm able to do this. He has believed in me from the get-go. He has told me from the time that I was a kid 
always find passion. And he went to Indiana. And honestly, I'm kind of upset that I didn't go to Indiana. I really wasn't interested in going to Indiana. But the Hoosiers, they play in the Big Ten. They just got Kirk Signetti. You know that they're going to have some money in NIL. You know they have good boosters. You know they have people that will buy in. Start turning it into a football school. Do what Mark Stoops did. Kentucky, 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 Kentucky. Oh, John Calipar. Well, you know what? Now they're a football school. Now they feel like a team that can actually go toe-to-toe with some of the other combatants in the Big Ten, in the Big 12, really anybody besides the contenders in the SEC, and hold their own and probably be a playoff team. Like, if you created your own conference and put Kentucky in there, like, that's what you want to do with Indiana. They deserve some love. They're a fun team. The Hoosiers should have a shot of going to the playoff. They're a downtrodden, dismayed, dysfunctional program. Unlike Northwestern, which every few years has some good years, they don't. Give them some love. Maybe you also, though, want to be the team that goes ahead and brings back something of relevancy to a major program. Of course, that program would be Miami. You got boosters. You got the sun. You got the South Florida atmosphere. You don't have a stadium, but who really cares? You got cool uniforms. You got a great logo. You got one of the best hand signs in all of college football, and you're going to be able to build this thing up quick. Yeah, you can go ahead and say that NIL doesn't do a lot of carrying of weight. If you know how to develop offensive linemen, you know how to play the game extremely well, you know how to get good quarterbacks to come on in, you offer the right deals when it comes to NIL collectives, yeah, you got to land some players. And yes, this game is going to have that opportunity for you. Speaking of fun fields, fun teams, fun rosters, let's talk about Boise State. Mountain West, you're going to be the favorites every single year. On top of that, you're also going to have the Blue Field, which is awesome. You're going to have the Blue Bronco which is awesome. You're going to be playing in Idaho, which again is awesome. It's a fun freaking state. On top of everything else, you know that oh, that Boise State's going to get a lot of love. You know that when it comes to the college football playoff rankings, you don't have to worry about always being in the top five of passing yards or top 15 in defensive numbers because you're Boise freaking state. You go undefeated and you win a Mountain West title. You're going to the playoff. You're going to get a lot of kids that are going to want to transfer in. You're going to feel good about this roster. This is a team that at the group of five level is probably premier second to none. There's like maybe two or three that compare alongside Boise State. And Boise State's the fun one. Maybe you want to go ahead and go crazy. And this is the crazy one. I would say Hawaii. You go fly out every single other week to another town. It's a six and a half hour trip. Maybe it's a nine-hour trip. Then you got to go overseas every single week. It's going to be jet lagged. You're going to be exhausted. But the Rainbow Warriors, come on. I mean, come on. How do you not at least consider them? Do you remember when they had Colt Brennan and he had every single record in college football and then they got eviscerated in the Sugar Bowl? Like, imagine doing that, but you just do that and you keep winning. Like, it's Hawaii. We don't talk about Hawaii. Nobody talks about Hawaii football. Why would you not want to put them on your list? And then there is the one that honestly feels like it should just be cinema. It should just be magic. I want this tradition back. It's Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, for those of you that don't know, and there's going to be a lot of newcomers playing this game for the first time. They don't understand what the atmosphere was when this video game was out. And Denard Robinson was still on there, and we used to have to Blow on the you know blow on the disc and stripe it off and make sure there was no dents. We treated it basically better than we treat our bodies at three in the morning when we go get Taco Bell. Virginia Tech at that point was still a prominent program. They still were a pretty decent team. But if you go back to two thousand one, you go back to two thousand and three, you go back to nineteen ninety eight. Virginia Tech at one point was one of the most dominant programs in college football. The Hokies were hollering, they were hoping, they were pleading, and they were prying on opponents. They didn't give a shit. They did it. They were fun. They had great rosters. They had a great head coach in Frank Beamer. They had a great defensive coordinator in Bud Foster. They would beat the living crap out of you and then smile while doing it. And if they weren't going to the college football postseason pitcher, they were at least making sure that somebody else didn't. That was what Virginia Tech was. And it finally feels like Lane Stadium that already sells out all the time. Lane Stadium that is packed to the brim. They have one of the best traditions in college football. We'll do that video actually probably next week, the top traditions. When you hear Enter Sandman, you know that you're special when ESPN or Fox or ABC or any other broadcast, they start getting ready for commercials when you go ahead and you touch Howard's Rock or when you touch the alligator or when you go ahead and you hit the sign in Ann Arbor. That camera stays. 
on those players as they make the walk from the field house to Lane Stadium and then run throughout the tunnel as enter salmon da 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 exit light is start rambling through your brains and this is such a good atmosphere this is the one where if you want to bring back a program to national relevancy with the game theatrics with the effects with everything that goes on with this how do you not pick Virginia Tech? They won 100% are on my short list of power four programs that I would at least consider. They're not going to be number one. Easily, that's kind of solid state for me. But any one of the teams I listed below, those are the ones that you absolutely have to consider. Let me know in the comments which team that I missed. Is there one that you're so sold on? And let me know if I just start the own Dynasty League. That way you can join. That way we can have a good college football community. We can enjoy the video game together. Like, rate, review, subscribe. Hit the podcast version of the show. Make sure that also you tell your friends, family, mortal enemies, EA sport fans, college football aficionados about this channel because we're on the race to become the number one YouTube show and, of course, the number one college football community right here on YouTube. To everybody out there, have a safe, healthy, happy, and also diligent Memorial Day weekend. To those who serve in our armed forces, those who currently are serving, or those who know somebody that served and gave the ultimate sacrifice with their life to protect this country, thank you for your service, and please know that you will never be forgotten. Please remember to drink responsibly. I am Cole Thompson. Have a fun Memorial Day weekend. Later. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. That's awesome. Thank you so much. But before you leave, make sure that you hit subscribe. And if you want to check out any of our other great work, make sure you click on one of the videos here. Am I pointing at the right spot? I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm really not.